Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for your faithfulness and the opportunity to, uh, to gather. Lord, we are uh, living in a time when, uh, Lord, uh, we can't presume upon that opportunity anymore. So we just pray, Lord, that you pour out your Holy Spirit, fill us afresh, that we might truly worship you in spirit and truth. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, uh, uh, so this is uh, the county, is, the state has put Kern, has put Kern County back uh, on the watch list uh, yesterday. Got, got that news late afternoon. Um, so we will not be gathering uh, after this Sunday until Kern County gets a handle on the, uh, on the COVID-19 issue. We'll be going back to Zoom. Right, you know, exclusively unless we're gathering uh, outside. So know that know that's happening. Uh, keep uh, a, a number of people in prayer. Uh, COVID nineteen uh, is a reality. Dell Hill passed away a couple weeks ago. Um, um, good good friend of uh, Elliot's and mine, uh, Gary Wu, get Gary Yoon, who's uh, been part of our Bible study missionary in Orange County. He's in ICU. With, with COVID, been there for uh, at least two or three weeks. Uh, so we want to keep Gary in prayer. Marsha Witten has pep, uh, tested positive. And um, uh, she's, uh, of course, quarantining. And that's where Daryl is. Daryl um, tested negative. Um, uh, so keep uh, uh, the Wittens uh, in prayer. Um, so it's, just, you know, it's, it's, it's come home, right? It's, it's come close to us. Uh, so let's let's be mindful of all of that. Uh, we're continue to, min, uh, to do provide water at the farmers market. Thanks everybody for bringing uh, the water, so so that we can continue uh, to do that. It's been a, it's been a great blessing. Um, all together now is happening uh, next week. I think Brian is planning on gathering outside because uh, we can we can gather outside, uh, you know, uh, without limitation. So, uh, so next Sunday outside. Tonight, we're continuing on the on in the 8 in 8 uh, core values, uh, looking at culturally relevant evangelism tonight at 6, and it will be on Zoom, okay, exclusively on Zoom uh, tonight. Anything else to be brought before us as we continue to worship? Well, the altar is open. I encourage you all to, uh, to draw near. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful.
There's a word from the Lord this morning. Dar has one. Dar? Kevin, why don't you come up as Dar, Sharon? Go ahead, Dar. Can you unmute yourself, Dar? I can't. We can't Dar, hear you. Did, I think. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. You're good now. So I woke up this morning just thinking about, um, for some reason, thinking about hard hearts and dull hearts. And Lord, how asking the question, how can a dull heart become sharp again? And uh, the the thought of my mind was, the Lord's word is living and active and sharper than any double edged sword. And then I, in my reading today, Acts 28 says this, the Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through the prophet, this people's heart has grown dull and with their ears, they can barely hear. And then it goes on and says, therefore, let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Thank you, Jesus. Kevin. I got this one from Wednesday's uh, devotion I read. It's uh, Psalms 30, 11, and 12. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not to be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. Amen. Kathy. Mike, you can't get these hands up. Yeah. This, I just want to encourage everybody to keep praying for your families that don't know the Lord. That this morning, my uh, prayer partner, Nita, she's from the Philippines, and um, she's a pastor, and she, um, on Friday, she got a word about the, um, the fig tree was going to produce fruit and blossom, and she really felt that God was um, encouraging her heart that families, the family tree, <laughs> was going to blossom and come and bring forth fruit and, and leaves, and um, yesterday... Saturday was um, Sunday in the Philippines, and they had seven moms and dads come to the Lord. Oh. Their, their, late te- their, their youth group of late teens and early 20s they're like, um, are really on fire for the Lord, and they're sharing with their families and just begging them to come to church, and they're witnessing in the community and praying with the, with the sick and the grieving. And... Um, it just touched my heart because, I, I, you know, it made me think when she said the fig tree was going to blossom, it made me think of how that gardener um, in, um, it intervened. The gardener interceded for the fig tree that wasn't bearing fruit to the owner of the fig tree. And, um, and I, I just believe that he, uh, the Lord was encouraging intercessors to keep praying for their families, praying for those Amen. where they haven't seen fruit. It's time for the harvest. It's time for the fruit. Amen. So be encouraged and keep praying. And yep. know there's seven more brothers and sisters in the oh. Philippines with us today. <laughs> Tell me her name again. Kathy. My fr- friend's name is, is Nita. 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 And she's yeah. a, a pastor. She started these two churches over there. Yeah, and she's um, the Lord. The family. Yeah, it's just a blessing. They have it's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Word from the Lord. We're on Zoom. Let's pray. Lord God, we do rejoice that 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 it is simply true that uh, man, you are at work uh, in in these days, and it, and it's as we and it's as we pray, Lord. It, it is as we experience your quickening. Lord, that, that we begin to see miracles. Uh, Lord, it is, it is simply your plan to, Lord, to move uh, in us and, and through us and, and by us, Lord to, Lord, to inspire us, Lord, Lord to give us that, that deep conviction of faith so, so that what we pray, Lord, might be, be you know, brought into reality. It's, it's a strange thing, and it's, 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 it's not the way we moderns generally you know, think about things. I mean, who, who am I? Well, who are we? <laughs> we are children of, of the living God. 
uh, saved to, to be in communion with the very creator of the universe, uh, 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 that we might know his thoughts, that we might feel his burdens, that we not, might, might be his hands, his feet, might, might be his, his voice uh, uh, speaking in, into dark uh, lives, dark circumstances. And so, Lord, we, Lord, we do rejoice that, uh, that you have saved us to use us. Lord, that, Lord, that we might manifest nothing less than the, uh, the fullness of your glory. Uh, Lord, in, in these days, Lord, there's, Lord there's, this, there's this increased rancor and division. Lord, as the coronavirus con- continues uh, to surge, Lord, the, the wearing of masks continues to be problematic for all kinds of people. It's become pol- politicized. Uh, Lord, uh, the, if I just feel like the evil one is capitalizing on the on, on the divisions uh, in 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 our in our nation, Lord God, uh, life is your highest value. Lord, you desire, Lord, Lord, to save and and for us in this moment, Lord, it means for us to care for one another. Lord, it's for us to move gently. Lord, for us to regard the. I mean, just these these crazy times that uh, that we haven't experienced for a hundred for over a hundred years. You know, folks in the Spanish flu days, yeah. If 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 they were living, man, they would tell us take this thing seriously, Lord. But what it, it's new for us, Lord. So I I just pray that Lord that you would galvanize your church, Lord, to to uh, to seek you, Lord, to uh, uh, to be wise. Lord, your desire is to to deliver us uh, uh, completely, Lord, to um, to restore not only uh, the uh, the nation, Lord, but the world and health and, and wholeness. And Lord, I just pray that uh, that you move deeply in our hearts, Lord. H- help us understand what uh, what you would have us do um, as we, Lord, as as we wait on you, Lord. You've, Lord. Uh, Isaiah 40 uh, has been in my, on my heart a lot in, in these days. Lord, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Lord, praise you. Praise you that your desire is to move through your people. Lord, so quicken us. Quicken us. Lord, get, give us clarity about what you would have because our, our desires do nothing less but to manifest your glory. Lord, so Lord, we pray for Gary, who's in the ICU fighting COVID. Lord, we pray that you would restore him. Lord, it's a strange nature of this disease that Kelly, his wife, who's also positive, isn't nearly as, as uh, is, is not nearly as much danger. And, and nobody understands why that is, why it, why it attacks some so violently and others not at all. Uh, Lord, for Marcia, Lord, we 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 pray that you you would be with her and. And heal her, Lord, as she's coughing an awfully lot. She's she, you know, she she's at home. Uh, but Lord, my heart goes out to her. So Lord, just just be with her. Lord, heal her. Lord, for Daryl, as he's as he's not positive, but he's at home. Lord, keep him safe. Uh, keep him safe. Lord, for for Ken, haven't heard from Ken since last. T- he told me that he had that he was. Uh, I had a fever and coughing and had taken a test and I'm not sure if he's positive or not but Lord pray pray that you would uh, touch him and and heal him Lord it's abstract until it comes close to home uh, Lord may it, may it motivate our prayers Lord may it may it focus us for your glory that we might pray with very with with precision and specific specificity Lord Lord what it is that uh, uh, that you would do uh, for your glory. Lord, we know how to pray, for you taught us to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Hey, we're going to uh, uh, go, go to our breakout rooms and, and small groups. Uh, and as we do, Chad, you're going to throw that up there? Do, whoops. Go ahead and put that up.
Go ahead and put the Prezi up, Chad. There you go. Print, yep, and present. And you see right there, right? So he, here, here's the question for reflection. Share some of the ways Jesus has helped you over the years. Share some of the ways Jesus has helped you over the years. What practical difference has Jesus made in your life? Okay? What practical difference has Jesus made in your life? Everybody understand the question? Right? Share together and, uh, and create these uh, breakout rooms. And I'll bring you back in about five minutes. Okay? So. Hi. Hello, Michael and Emily. Hey. There's Daryl. I am. Hey, Mike. Hollis. Hey guys. Hey guys. I think this is an easy question. I the what practical difference has he made in our life? In my life, he's made every difference. Every everything about my life is different. It's just not the same life it, it, that was that was there. The, um. From my parents being in here, my sisters to uh to my children, there's there's nothing in my life that's the same now that that God has taken over. Amen. I was reflecting on when um, I finally came to the realization that Jesus was real, and that He had, and what He had done for me and that was that week that I went on the walk to mass and I, I I just didn't understand it until I went through that whole weekend and what a difference he's made in my life I think the greatest difference is the peace that passes all understanding and the joy of the Lord being my strength those are the two things that sustain me day in and day out well, I'm kind of like Elliot. Um, I try to live my life. Uh, I have for a long, you know, very long time. Um, I, I put the needs of my family before my own. You know, the needs and their wants. I try to at least. I think back, I, I think many years ago when I was a lot younger, I feared life, I feared getting old, I feared this, but uh, coming to Jesus and... You know, uh, Jesus, you know, had to be a part of that for me to progress in my recovery, you know, and and so, and I see people struggling with it. You know, and I'm, and, you know, sometimes I have the opportunity to share with them my experience, strength, and hope, not only in recovery, but mostly in Jesus. That's my experience, strength, and hope, is Jesus. You know, because without him, I'm just a ship tossed in the wind, you know. And, uh, but the foundation that I got in recovery very definitely plugged me back into Christ. Because Amen. at one time in my life, I had vowed never to ever darken the uh, steps of the church again, you know. And, you know, we have a thing in recovery. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Right. You know? <laughs> and um, so, you know, but I, I just praise the Lord that I have a church family. You know? And that, that I have Christ in my life again. And he never left. I was the one that moved, of course, you know. But uh, I just praise the Lord where I'm 
birthday. I missed it by one day. But she gave birth to a, 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 a grandson, great-grandson, uh, who's half Chinese. And he's just the cutest, uh, neatest, smartest little thing ever. So, that's it. You know, that's it, oh, right, Al? That's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just jumped in. You're you're just sharing about Heather, right? Heather, yes. Yeah. yeah. And how how she had a a, a baby son. Yeah, I heard. And, I heard uh, the bit. Yeah. Praise oh, the Lord. Man. Oh, gee. Yeah. The Lord. Thanks, Al. How about yep. you, Tammy or Jerry? Uh, I'll, I'll go back to about uh, 2008, where uh, I was just basically a framer, a carpenter, with with uh, no safety net or no nothing. We're almost on the verge of outlaws, really, back then. But uh, the housing market fell. There was, there was not one job on the horizon. Everything was falling apart, and there was no hope. And uh, that's when I, I got a job with the city. And... Uh, that's, I know that was Jesus. I know that was God that did that. And, uh, and now uh, I'm retired now, but I, I got a little pension now, which I could have never had back then. I don't know how I could have ever retired just doing what I was doing before. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. It always takes care of us. Yeah. Tammy, Amen. did you, did you want to say something? You have to unmute yourself, Tammy, if you want to speak. There she goes. Oh, I can't hear you, sweetie. Can't, can't hear her, Tammy. Push, the, pu push your microphone button. Uh -huh. There you can go. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, the Lord has restored my mind um, from being um, tormented. Amen. And um, has brought me peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's no small thing, man. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. I got one. Yes. The Lord is helping me to listen deeply to my wife and be sensitive to her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. But it's really, really hard. <laughs> Sorry. Having too much fun. All right. Hey, guys, we're coming back together. And put Zoom back on the screen. I'm just wondering, as we uh, would, would would anyone like to share what what you heard, or may, maybe what you shared? One, you know, one practical way that the Lord has made a difference uh, in your life. Um, anybody on Zoom or the congregation? You guys, just run up to the microphone if you'd like to share. Come on, Al, go ahead iPhone 8 Plus, Mikey. See him? Hold on, Al. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Mike. There you go. Okay. Uh, uh, years ago, uh, many people in the church prayed for my uh, uh, granddaughter, and my granddaughter had a rare uh, uh, disorder that uh, affects the people from the Far East. And it got so bad that uh, uh, she, she got pregnant, and uh, and uh, before she was to deliver, uh, she ended up in ICU, and her uh, blood pressure was way up. But she managed to deliver a day late. That missed my birthday by one day. But I have a, a great grandson that's half Chinese, and uh, and half Caucasian. Uh, and uh, it's amazing uh, that God uh, pulled her through that. A lot of prayers and uh, prayers to keep her alive early on. So, uh, and now I have four great grandsons. Wow. Yeah, amen. I, man, I, I remember those days, Al. Absolutely. Pretty intense. Anybody else? Well, we are a reticent crowd today. We are reticent. Okay, well, I'm just going to preach then. Because I want to talk about Jesus, all right? So, Chad, let's go back to the Prezi, because everybody's Hello. shy and bashful today, all right? John put his hand up. What's that, Mike? John, John put his hand up. Who? John. Oh, John Grantham? Yes. Go ahead, John. All right, so um, it seemed like what was being said was kind of the same thing, that uh, it's kind of the the – 
the daily things that change our lives that that the holy spirit comes in and he and he intercedes for us and he comes in and he, and he and he shows us where the pitfalls are and where and where um where we need to be even though we may not be ready to do that we might be cautious leery or whatever but um but trusting in him he will bring us to wherever we need to go and that's probably one of the biggest accomplishments he's had in our lives amen just just step by step day, daily walking with him yeah praise the lord bill kelly keeps raising his hand okay bill yes i'll sum up what i uh, said earlier in, in this breakout um words of david i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears amen amen all of them amen all right, but Ted, let's, let's put the prezi back up on the screen. And uh, so turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1 as we continue to walk through this, this, this powerful uh, text. Uh, Paul writes to probably his most intimate church. Ephesus was probably his most powerful church, and um, Philippians is most intimate. Philippians 1. Uh, 19 through 20, and a lot of the translations probably start the last bit of 18, so I'll start there, although it may not be on the prezi. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Man, I so appreciate uh, the word that Marianne gave us in, in the testimony that, uh, oh, boy, Chad, it just died on me. You, you might have to click it for me. Okay, it's not doing it. It's not grabbing it. It's the devil again. So if you'll go ahead and push, push the arrow. For I know that through your prayers... Is it frozen? Okay, re, uh, relaunch it. Okay, so if you look at there at verse 19, through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. And what we see there is, 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 a, is a picture of, of one of the, the basic themes in Philippians, which is koinonia, which is, which is fellowship. And what Paul is recognizing is, that, is, is this partnership that, through your prayers and the help of the Holy Spirit, for for Paul that 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 is seamlessly linked together, both our prayers and the work of the Holy Spirit. Our prayers releases the uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, and and that uh, it's a major theme in Philippians that that we see. Uh, for I know that through your prayers and the hope of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my. Uh, deliverance. Anybody have any other translations besides the ESV in the room here? For ever, does everyone have deliverance there? Okay, it's, and that's a translator's choice. Uh, 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 the simple word there is the word salvation. It could be, you got salvation, is that New King James? Yeah, salvation. Uh, so, so it could read for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my salvation. Let's see if we got this thing going again. I think we got it, Chad. Praise the Lord. Cool heads prevail. All right. So we got the partnership, the major theme of Koinonia. And we go back. Right. Four possibilities for this word salvation that, 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 that this text uh, suggests for us in order to you know, help us appreciate what, what Paul is experiencing, what he's going through. First, and this is kind of the foundational notion, which is our uh, eternal destiny, right? That's when we say, I've been saved. When, when we use salvation in that sense, what we're talking about is our eternal destiny. Uh, now, the shorthand for, for getting at that is, you know, going to heaven you know, when you die, but careful readers of the Bible understand that, well, that, that's kind of shorthand for saying being with the Lord, wherever the Lord may be. Uh, our, our eternal destiny is secure. And you look here, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, uh, Paul has no doubt about his eternal destiny. 
He's walking in the presence and the power of God. That's a, a, the most powerful validation of our eternal security is the witness of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. It, it could be the fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. It could be the, uh, uh, the, uh, the affirmation of the Spirit. God's Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. It could be the, uh, the manifestation of signs and wonders that the Lord works as we trust in Him, as we pray and we see wonderful things happen you know, all around us. You know, the reality of God's presence at work in our lives guarantees, right? It's the stamp that says, boy, we are right with the Lord and all is well. Amen? Right? So there's no question that Paul's eternal destiny is secure. You know, a, a second possibility is uh, Paul's intimate demise, right? He, he, he might be fearing for his life. And so he's using the word salvation. Uh, man, I, I might be dying here, right? Except we, we see this wonderful phrase at the end of verse 21, right? To die is gain. One of the great blessings of our eternal destiny is that we become bulletproof, not literally bulletproof. Hear me now. Give your life to Jesus. A bullet will still kill you. But your eternal destiny is secure. So, so the believer no longer fears death because we can truly say with Paul that to die is gain because of the intensity of the power of uh, of God's Spirit in our lives. It used to be said of those first re uh, revivalist Methodists, you know, back in the 1700s, that Methodists died well because of the assurance, the, the depth and the intimacy of their walk with the Lord. So Paul's not concerned about his, his imminent d demise, or he doesn't mean salvation uh, in that sense. A third possible option is, is, you know, someday I might, you know, get out of this prison and get back to what, you know, I'm, I'm, you know the, Lord, the Lord has called me to. So he's wanting the Lord to, you know, deliver him out of prison, much like he did in the first account in Philippi with Paul and Silas in the jail and the earthquake. And, you know, the, and the jailer came to, to Christ. We, uh, we, took, uh, we took a look at that story. He, he may be wanting a, a similar kind of miracle to happen, except we read this just a few verses below, uh, in verses 25, 26, where he says, Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all, so that in me you may have ample cause of glory in Christ because of my coming to you again. Paul has absolutely every expectation. Indeed, it's the conviction that he's a short timer in, in, in prison. Right? He is convinced that he's going to go back to be with the Philippians at some point. And this is, I mean, this is the miracle of our Cornelia partnership with the Lord. That's why I was so blessed by um, uh, uh, Kathy's word about, is it Nida, right? Terry, Nita, Nita, having this, you know, this, uh, you know, this conviction that the, uh, that the family tree was uh, was going to blossom and many were con were were going to come to faith. How did she know that? That's the experience of the Holy Spirit giving us clarity, giving us conviction that this will come to pass. In fact, that's what motivates, you know, our prayer. When 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 we have that that, that divine unction that the Lord is about to move, man, we don't stop praying. Man, we, uh, we pray with even greater intensity because in this coin in the air partnership, you know, somehow, and ask him when you see him, I don't know exactly how it works or why it works. I just know it does work. That, that when, when we pray, you know, life, you know, our Father in our heart in heaven, hallowed be the name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He moves in our hearts to give us conviction to understand what, he, what we would have. And then we pray. Then we pray. So just like uh, Nita had this conviction that the, the family tree was going to blossom and many were going uh, to come to Christ, here Paul ha has every expectation 
that he's going to get out of prison. He's going to go back and see the Philippians again. So he's not so much concerned about um, you know, get, getting out of prison. right? So the question is, well, what is he concerned about? That through the prayers of the people and the help of the Spirit of Christ, this will turn out for my salvation. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but with full, full courage now as always, Christ will be honored. What Paul is concerned about is not shame, but honor. We've talked a lot about the honor-shame culture, really hard for us to wrap our brains around it in, in the West, but for in, in, in uh, cultures where honor and shame uh, is, is, is a big deal, folks would rather die than be dishonored, right? So we all understand, you know, we, we, you know Harry Terry is what we called it when you were a kid, you know, the Japanese Bushido discipline of, of, a, of a Japanese warrior killing himself rather than, than be captured. And it's, that's a, it's a bizarre you know, notion for us Westerners, but in an honor-shame culture, man, that is intense. And so what Paul is saying is that, that his, 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 his expectation for salvation, for deliverance, what his desire is that, that Christ will not be that he will not be ashamed, but that Christ will be honored. And that's pretty remarkable. But that with full courage right here, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored. And so we see this this remarkable shift in Paul's self-understanding his desire is not for his that for him being, you know, dishonored. His deepest desire is that Christ will be honored. Who cares about me as long as Christ is honored? You know, and, and we can think about this in, in a variety of ways. Uh, you know, what's interesting, we, we don't live in an honor-shame culture. But, but honor, shame still has a powerful influence. We just don't tend to be in touch with it because we're, uh, you know, Westerners. You know, you, you know when the gang crowd says you're dissing me, right? Disrespect, you're dissing me. They're operating out of this, this deep-seated uh, honor, shame uh, a dynamic. And so we have all kinds of co- competing I- identities. Uh, we'll see for Paul, you, ha- you have the sense of, uh, of the circumcision, versus the uncircumcision. And Paul's going to use some pretty strong language in, in chapter 3 as you have this, 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 this Jewish identity, this sense of being God's people is wrapped up in the national marker of, of circumcision. And, and Paul comes to realize that, that the identifying quality is no longer circumcision, but, but it's faith in Jesus. It's, it's having that living, you know, entering into that living reality of Christ in our lives, that's the true marker of of uh, of salvation. And so, you know, Paul, Paul shifts, and that creates uh, you know a major conflict in Paul's world. And we'll see that by, around uh, a chapter three. Uh, for Paul, that was a major competing identity: the sense of cir- circumcision or non-circumcision in our day denominations, right? Christian denominations. Uh, praise God, I trust it's diminishing, you know, as time unfolds, right? As the Christian culture, you know, fades away and the, and the various folks who exist in various denominations realize we really got to hang together, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's no longer what church is in charge. It's, it's like, right, man, no, no church is in, in, in charge. Uh, in, in the South, man. In, in the South, it's, it had been, you know, real intense, man. If you're Methodist, you don't step into a Baptist, in, into a Baptist building. If, and if you're Pentecostal, forget it, right? You're way out in, in the outer fringe. This, I mean, this deep sense of, of honor, this identity wrapped around uh, denominations. I was just reading, uh, uh, I think it was yesterday uh, or maybe Friday that the, uh, that the official policy of the Catholic Church coming down from Rome 
is that if there's any kind of uh, abuse against children that, that, that uh, the diocese is to immediately call the authorities, the secular authorities, immediately call the police. Uh, and that's a dramatic shift, yeah. right? Because they're recognizing that in, 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 in protecting, uh, 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 the motivation to protect the church, Christ has been dishonored. Right, and and we see that all kinds of folks, you know, I mean, as I talk to folks who you know who aren't Christian, and you, and and you say Christian, and they think, you know, priests who take advantage of of children. Christ is dishonored, so I, I that's a powerful shift for the you know for the Catholic Church to, uh, to recognize that there's a higher value than you know the Catholic Church covering up their errors. You know, Christ must be honored at every point. Amen. Amen. That's really good. And you know, and for us, you know, you know, I, I recognize that our competitor is the devil. <laughs> it is not the sister congregations uh, in town. Okay, political parties, right? Democrat, Republican. Whoo! Right? Now we're getting kind of close to home. Right? Competing identities. Right? Where depending on on how you identify, you know, your faith with what political party, man, it's amazing the intensity that that folks can bring to the uh, 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 the political dynamics of our day. Absolutely convinced that to stand for one political party is to turn to Christ, is, is to stand for Christ. Falling into this error. Christ will be honored. Yes. Christ will be honored. The easiest thing to do, it, it, you know, by, by embracing a, a, a competing identity is to compromise the high calling of Christ in order to win. There's a, you know, there's a political agenda, a political objective that, that must be secured. Jesus can take care of himself. Christ is moving in profound ways. And the danger is when we, out of, out of, out of a misguided notion to honor Christ, we move political party in front of Christ devil's game, right? I, you know, various I identity groups, you know, um, you know, the white nationalists or the Black Lives Matter or the gay community. I mean, you know, that's, that's what identity politics is all about. That honor get, gets wrapped up into, into a com competing identity block so that what go happens with my identity block, you know, happens to me. Easy, easy for that to move in, in front of, of, oh, no, only Christ is honored. And, of course, the, uh, the biggest challenge of all is me. So think about Paul. Paul is sitting in prison. The only worst thing, the only more dishonorable experience Paul could have would be crucified, would be crucifixion. In the eyes of society, only crucifixion is worse than imprisonment. And there Paul sits. But he, Paul has no concern about himself. Let me be dishonored. Christ honored in me. Everyone see that? Right? Highest value. All right. Verse 20, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body. Right? In the doing, 
what we do is important. <laughs> okay, fun clip. Chad, I got a video coming up right now. So watch this. This is from uh, Jerry Maguire, the movie. Um, so you got Tom Cruise as Jerry Maguire and um, Cuba Gooding Jr. as um, as a wide receiver, Rod Tilling. Um, and uh, so this, so 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 the clip is uh, just after. If you remember the Mary, uh, the movie Jerry Maguire writes this moral manifesto about you know not caring for money and having concern for the athletes, right? And he thinks he's done this great thing, and he goes to work, and and all hell is <laughs> breaking loose, right? So he is scrambling to recover. And so what he's doing is he's trying to keep his athletes from abandoning him. And so uh, he's got uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. He's got Rod on the phone. Okay, uh, let's see if this works. Model Jerry, I have a family to support. Hear me? I want to stay in Arizona. I want my new contract. But I like you. Yes, I like you, Jerry. My wife likes you. You're good to my wife. I will stay with you. That's, that's great. I'm very happy. Are you listening? Yes. That's what we do for you. God bless you, Jerry. But this is what you're going to do for me. You listen? Jerry? Yeah, well, well, what, what can I do for you, Rod? You just tell me what can I do for you. It's a very personal, very important thing. <laughs> it's a family mob. Are you ready, Jerry? I'm ready. Wow. Well, make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. Show me the money. Show you the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Louder. Show me the money. That's it, brother. You got to Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. Show me the money. I love black people. I love black people. What you gonna do, Jerry? Still my <laughs> All right. What in the world does that have to do with with honoring God in the body? Okay. So what Cuba Gooding, what 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 Rod knows, right? And there, and and this is in the context of the racism thing. Hey, Rod knows that uh, that that the white uh, sports agent. Man, he sees the athlete as a commodity. That's all the athlete is to him. It's a commodity. And Cuba Gooding Jr., right, is not going to give himself to someone who thinks that he's a commodity, right? And so what Cuba Gooding do it, is doing is, is testing um, um, Jerry's commitment. And, and I love that movie making, right? So, so you have... Uh, you have Jerry Maguire, who's all bound up on his desk. His body is tie tied up in knots. And what is Cuba Gooding Jr. doing, man? Show me the money, right? I want you involved 100% heart, body, and soul. And then, do you hear what? Uh, did you hear what Cuba say, said on the phone? Say, I love black people. What is Cuba doing? You're not going to use me. I want you committed to me. 100% in the doing. Heart. Body. Soul. And this is what Paul recognizes. That's what Jesus wants from us. He wants us 100% committed. That's what he means by in the body. Everything I am. 
everything I do is to honor Christ. Does that make sense? Everything. Right? So we don't yell, I love black people. I mean, we do. And we can. I love Jesus! Amen? Amen. Say it with me. I love Jesus! And we got to get the body going as we do it, man. That's right. Way to go. Cuba Gooding Jr. Man, that's a great scene. I just love that. All right. All right. Whether by life or by death. Whether by life or by death. Because nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. If my deepest conviction is that Christ must be honored, no matter what, nothing else matters. We are here for a moment. We are here for a moment. You know, as we look at the, you know, where the church is in America, you know, and feel like we're, you know, we're, we're getting constrained or whatever, or we're losing our voice or whatever. This is just for a moment. Just for a moment. Jesus can take care of himself. What he wants from us, he wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be 100% committed with every aspect of our being, come what may, because nothing else matters. And if we can get to that place, and if we can live from that reality, you know, blowing past all the confusion, blowing past the identity politics, blowing past political parties, blowing past denominations, you know, blowing past, you know, whatever else might, might compete for our, our attention and our commitment. If we can get to that place that says nothing else matters, come what may, there's a chance Jesus will be glorified. And Christ will be honored. And so Paul closes his thought. Everybody needs to know this one, and we probably do. For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Now, Jesus is at work through his people when we can live there. Will you bow your hearts and heads with me? Lord God, we do rejoice in the fullness of your presence. Lord, the fullness of your passion. Lord, it's you who makes the difference uh, in life. Um, Lord, it's just a, it's just a function of, of human nature that that we get uh, distracted by the things right in front of us, be it uh, scary circumstances, be it shiny lights or, 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 or new toys uh, or, or fearful things. Lord, but the conviction you call us to, Lord, is to live for you and to live for you alone. To, Lord, to be grounded in you and trust that you are at work in profound ways in us and through us, that you'll quicken us. Lord, yes, you'll... Teach us how to pray. Lord, we, we will see manifestations of miracles and signs of wonders, and you'll work glorious things. Lord, if we can say with the Apostle Paul, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Lord God, move in our hearts. Move in our hearts to that end for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So go from this place, fill this presence, fill this power, and serve him for his glory both now and forever. Amen. Uh, they got to un unmute themselves. You guys can unmute yourselves, man. Say hello.
Hello. Oh, excellent message, Pastor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Marcia, how are you, Marsha Whitten? Fine. Good. All right. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. Bless you, guys. Bless you, too.